Father, we begin this year with you. We have come to seek your face because we are publicly proclaiming that we are insufficient. And so we ask for your help, we ask for your enablement in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes that we might see the emphasis of heaven. That our labor in your kingdom will be consistent with adequate insight. So that we will not be found beating against the air, but running towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. I think the, the way to proceed is to say Happy New Year. I, amen. Happy New Year. Amen. We have been, <laughs> the Lord will help us. The, many years ago, in, okay, let me start this way. Maybe, um, I, I want to introduce somebody before I proceed. You know, my, Younger brother, Reverend Hills, is traditionally married. Are you aware of that? <laughs> Reverend Hills is traditionally married, as he is. is it? And uh, so this is my own attempt at showing us his damsel. Because, so bring your damsel, let's see first. So that we know. So, you'll be seeing two of them together in the town, the filling station, in the, <laughs> in the supermarket. That's why I want to do a formal uh, introduction. They are traditionally married, and uh, I guess in April, on the 23rd of March, um, the church wedding will take place. I present to us Reverend Hughes. You have, okay, tell us who that damsel is. What's her name? Praise the Lord. She's, um, is it Miss now or Mrs.? <laughs> okay. Traditionally, she's, um, she was Miss Faithfulness in Gwevese Quimbe. And now, yeah, that's, I don't know, but, <laughs> <laughs> that's her name. Yeah, and uh, by God's grace, on the 23rd of March, in Kefi, we'll be having the, trad- the Christian rites by God's grace. Thank you. So, on the 23rd of March, so once again, I, I introduce, okay, uh, we have the card, it will be displayed on the, this is my own, what of the, for the church, all right. So, uh-huh. we'll put it on the on the notice board. You are welcome, sister. Sister Gwevese, glory to God. And that's a, that's on a good note. But I came to afflict us with a body. That's why we had to do all the other aspects. <laughs> Amen. You see, we need to pray this year. We need to pray. How many of you have sensed it that revival will begin to break out this year? Have you sensed it? This is the year we have been waiting for. We waited so long. We waited, prayed. 
There's destiny that is associated. Maybe you have had some things you wrote down in your diary that has not come to pass. Because there is a time for the effect of every vision. Some visions will not take effect until the appropriate time lends its potential in form of grace. Then actualization will become a possibility. And this is that year that you have waited for. Maybe maybe in the cycle of your life you might have noticed patterns that are not consistent with your expectation. Particularly because you have been visited once and again by the Lord and he has casted several visions before your face. Meanwhile, circumstances and situations have proven that that which God has said is not likely to come to pass. The Bible reveals that uh, there is a season for the effect of every vision. Now, when you see a vision of glory, there is a season that will bring about the effect of that vision. And until that season comes, it will look as if God lied to you. Hallelujah. And for several people, they backslid before the season of the effect of the visions that God had given unto them came to pass. But the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's obvious that our PA system has tried. This one, I think it's eight years old. It's nine years old. So it has fulfilled its lifespan. How many of you are aware that the lifespan of a laptop is actually ten years from manufacturer's perspective? I know you are hoping that your own will, will remain to old age. <laughs> Now this, God will help us to, to remove this thing. And then, by tomorrow our new consignment will come. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Amen. We'll, we'll trust God to have good. Um, it's the year of the harvest. And whenever there's revival, there's responsibility. Believers need to become disciples. Hallelujah. Because God will require a functional army to be able to take back the ground that has been conceded to the enemy. We need um, men and women positioned and planted in various facets of human endeavor pointing everyone within that workspace to Jesus Christ. So in the day of revival, uh, it's not a day of titles, it's a day of function. Right, so we are going to keep our titles aside and we are going to see how we can forge an army to take over the territory for Jesus. Now we've been walking behind the scene up until this time and the Lord has been blessing our efforts up until this time. But there is a demand for a higher level of synergy, of brotherhood, of partnership, of alliance, of honorable men and women that will have to come together in order for us to prosecute the counsel of the law. And this is that time that we have waited for. And there are several breakthroughs in terms of personal breakthroughs, you know, marriages and all kinds of stuff that come to us on a personal level to enhance our lives and proper and adequately position us with um, the way we have and the necessary influence that will impact upon the kingdom agenda. All of that is also encapsulated in the dividends of the system. And one of my assignments is to ensure that none of us misses out of that grand thing that God is about to do. But you must understand that if God must walk we are not the only Christians in Makodi, for instance. And God has to reach every believer. So one of the things that He will help us to do is to put aside if there is any ideology of denomination you have sustained, anything that is divisive in nature. We are going to have to put it aside for us to give us the heart that is required for us to receive grace to do the kind of business he will have us do. Hallelujah. And I, I want to also say that the reason why you have not seen me is because I've been under attack. Not that I am sick or my pocket. 
was attacked. That's not what I mean. You see, there has been a conspiracy. The devil will always attack you through the fourth line of your life. And my own fourth line is still is that I'm still a civil servant. And most of my attacks come from there. When we were doing crusades here, you will not know what I went through. It was a strange thing. But you see, I found out that fasting and prayer is powerful. Very powerful. And all the prayers that we prayed, maybe maybe during the course of the week, I would take time to tell us what happened behind the scene. And how many human beings came together to see to it that something terrible happens to me. But you know, those prayers and those fastings, it, it stopped the mouth of life. I know that um, I felt it in my spirit already that my time in civil service is about to come to an end. However, I will not leave with a query. That's not God's way. All right. So I will not leave with a query. I will, I will come out with a, a red carpet exit, not with well, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I would like us to look at Nigeria because the context of what I want to say has to do with the church in our nation. For those of you that are familiar with um, the prophecies of our Elton, okay, we still have some time. When is the prayer and fasting season ending? Well, I don't know, but we will, as we move in the day meetings and the night meetings, God will help us to be dropping a body here and there. Those of us that are acquainted with the prophecies of our Elton, you must have seen some of them flash on Facebook recently, how that he was able to peek through prophetic insight that Nigeria would be known worldwide as the headquarters of corruption. Did you see that on Facebook? There are good reasons to be on Facebook. There are also terrible reasons to be there. But if for... Facebook provided of a platform to reach back into hallowed antiquity and to see the signature of our heritage that was captured in the prophetic utterance of our elder. And he said that Nigeria was going to be known world over as the headquarters. It will stench with corruption. Now, I happen to be working in a sector of our country that is considered the most efficient sector. And on the strength of the statistics that we manage, that data capturing that we do, and if data means anything at all, hallelujah, you know, we capture data. And the data we capture has to do with um, the potential and the potency of the oil industry. Hallelujah. And this, our, this data that we capture is, is quite informative. It gives us some ideas on a level of wealth that is coming through that corridor. If data means anything, In the last five years, in terms of production of crude oil, we have produced the highest volume of crude oil. But with more production, is more poverty. And the reason is because there's a leakage. A leakage that was not designed by demons, but by men. Nigeria today is required or regarded as an all-time corruption headquarter, according to the prophecy of our elder. However, that was not the end of the prophecy. Because our elder also said that it will come to pass that God will visit Nigeria and then Nigeria will now be known for righteousness, so much so that other nations will have to visit to find out how that template was achieved from a place that was previously known as the headquarters of corruption. If the figures mean anything, 
Corruption has never ever prospered the way it is prospering now. This is the darkest moment of the history of Nigeria. And this is that year that God wants to bring about an intervention. Now, listen to me. Those of you that read wide, read about the Germans. And when you read about the Germans, you'll find out there are two things about the Germans that you cannot take from them. The first thing is the Germans are the creators of the best engines. I'm not talking about automobile, just automobile engines. I'm talking about automobile engines, aircraft engines, submarine engines, ship engines. If you are talking engines, you are talking Germans. Yes. That's why they call them German machine or something like that. It, it, they are the best created. In fact, their engines, oh my God. My, meanwhile, I'm not a marketer. Have you wondered what Nigeria really has? What did God give us? Because uh, <laughs> are you with me? What did Baba give Nigeria? Fortunately for us, the only thing that God gave us is revival. That's the only you know, it's just like the community of nations, God decided to give inheritance. What he gave to Nigeria is revival. You will, if you study history very well, you'll find out that what we call the oil boom was the direct result of the SU revival. It was when the SU revival began to ravage the entire landscape that oil was discovered in commercial quantity. Every time the move of God prospers in our nation, it translates to something of economic benefit. You know, when Jesus was born, the Bible says that wise men came with gifts. Gifts of gold, gifts of frankincense, and gifts of men. You see, the economy changed just because that which God wanted to birth was effectively delivered. The next implication was that the economy shifted. Now, that's the story of Nigeria. If Nigeria is able to receive that which God is offering and tend it, it, it affects every sphere of human endeavor. Now, the prosperity that came to the SU revival was what, you know, as at 1977, who were so rich that the government didn't know what to do with money. And what the president then did was that he went across West Africa and mobilized all the deities in the landscape in the name of a festival called Festac 77. In fact, the houses that were built, estates that were built in honor of Festac 77 still form one of the biggest estates in the entire landscape of Lagos. And if you visit Festa, which was where I tried to get an accommodation, the spirits that they brought, not all went back. It's, you see, hallelujah. It was from that year, and some of us were born in 77. May the Lord give you understanding. That was the year that the devil threw confusion into Nigeria. And from that time, we began to go the way of the wilderness. Unfortunately for us, our journey through the wilderness has been more than 40 years. But just like I said, there is a season for the effect of every vision. As we are drifting into darkness, it's so that, and you know, at a point, you can't even be a chief executive on several platforms of government except you sign up to be part of a certain kind of fraternity. That made the administration of our nation so occultic that there are several levels of authority you cannot enter until you sign up to be a part of a certain satanic product. May, Lord, may the Lord have mercy on us. I came to sound an alarm because the seasons are changing. But it happens to be that God will only walk through his instrument called the church. I would like us to look at this church very well. From 2019 perspective, how is the church? If we finish this analysis, tomorrow we will now begin to look at 